All right, so we are back working on the blue Mustang. So previously, And now we're back to it. All right, so as you know, this is going to SEMA in the Vibrant booth. So we want to put all of the Vibrant goodies that we possibly can on this thing. So we're redoing a little bit of it because we want to add in the Vibrant pie cuts for this as well because we have some titanium bits going up front so you want to follow suit and do some pie cuts down here and if you guys know me you know that i don't like prevent stuff i'd rather you know pie it out you get it to fit right where you want to everything tucks in the pocket where you want to it's a beautiful thing add a couple little extra sauces to this exhaust running a uh, PD-16 for all the chassis control for this from Haltech. We also have a Haltech R5 in this which has so many outputs on the ECU that we actually don't need all of it just for the engine. So a lot of the stuff like the fuel pumps, the radiator fans, all that stuff is just going to be independently controlled by the engine harness as well. So most of this stuff here is just going to be for lighting functions. So for all the rock lights you guys see me wiring as well as headlights, taillights, brake lights and things like that. So we've been reading through everybody's comments on this car and one of them said put the turbos on the top of the hood kind of like the unicorn like this yeah this work i hope this works i'm already i'm already deep into pie cuts so i hope you like this one but yeah it's gonna go through the hood just like the unicorn it's a perfect spot for it i mean look at it it's gonna tuck right down go along the frame rail be out of the way of the tires and wheels real nice like i can see where they put it up there so, good idea. I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? Então aí pessoal, motor Vodu 5.2 litros, ele tem 533 cavalos, então a gente está fazendo algum retrabalho para melhoria, melhoria dele. Esse é o motor mais potente que a Ford desenvolveu hoje, aspirado. Então aqui a gente está interligando a parte dos, cabe, dos cabeçotes para melhoria do enriquecimento na parte traseira do motor. E também aqui também foi feita uma ligação nos dutos de lubrificação para fazer a calibragem de pressão de óleo, onde circula o óleo de um lado para o outro na parte do cabeçote superior. Então tá aí o motorzão com virabriquim plano, existe dois modelos de virabriquim, o cruzado e o plano que é esse aqui. Ele já vem com pistão aliviado, biela aliviado. Esse é um motor que tem um custo muito alto, mas é o motor que mais gira da Ford aí, 7.500 rotação. Então tá aí o bruto, daqui a pouco vamos finalizar a montagem dele para os meninos da sequência no motor lá. Também um detalhe aqui, foi eliminado os sensores de fase de três comandos, só vai ser utilizado de um comando de admissão para pegar a parte de sinal da, de rotação dos comandos como vai usar o sistema Haltech, o sistema de gerenciamento já foi colocado também o sensor de temperatura aqui e vai ser eliminado que vai nesse cabeçote aqui, beleza?
All right, so we're working towards the back of the car now. The guys got a lot of the plumbing and everything done for the hoses. So now we're moving to um, getting everything set up for our radiators and fans. So we actually have two Mishimoto radiators stacked back here just to make sure that this thing never gets hot. Also the Mishimoto fans here, and we also have Mishimoto oil cooler and power steering cooler, both of which I have fans on them in the front of the car. So um, Haltech gives you these sweet, um, basically fill in the blank wiring diagrams, which give you all of your color selections. And actually when you're in the tuning software, it's really cool because you don't have to worry about what pin or output number. You can just select, oh, I have the pink and red wire and it'll let you um, run the output base just off of the wire color instead of knowing the output. And then you can set all of your parameters for over amperage load and everything like that. So right now I'm just trying to figure out where everything is going to run on our PDM. Originally we were going to run a lot of stuff off of the engine harness, but now um, because of how much amperage load we're going to have total, we're just going to split some of the stuff up onto the PDM as well so that we don't overload it since it is an eight cylinder with a lot of extra inputs for the turbos and Mac valves and stuff like that. I asked them if they built the turbo manifolds without a transmission on. They said they had a different transmission in place when they mocked up the motor and made the turbo pipe. So now they're gonna bolt up the um, turbo manifolds to go from the engine to the turbos and then put the trans in place. And then from that position, then they make their trans cross member wherever the trans ends up falling. And drive shaft. And, and drive shaft, all that. Kind of ass backwards, but like my go. transmission's not even here yet. Got a bonus bolt for you. Oh, thank you, appreciate it. Yeah, man. I was going to put it in a pile of bolts over there just to try and mess with you, but you know, I decided to be nice. Sure. I keep pushing. All right, so we are back in the shop, all hands on deck here. So answering all the questions of everybody asking about how we went with the hurricane, we actually got super lucky this time. Our temporary solutions to keep the doors and everything sealed worked out really good. We are working on a more long-term solution to keep everything sealed up and happy in here. But yeah, in terms of everybody, everybody's back home, everybody's got power again, and we are all good. Yeah, 
So we've been working a lot with Haltech on this build. So we did run the PDM, which came really convenient because they come with a flying lead harness. Essentially give you all of your connectors, different wire colors and everything like that, and already have eight foot lengths on them. So assuming that your um, PDM would be mounted underneath the dashboard, it gives you enough slack to run it to the front, rear of the car, the fuel pumps, rear mounted radiator, whatever you need. We're also running the new Haltech R5 on this thing, which they make a flying lead harness for as well. So we had someone actually already predetermined everything pretty much where they just labeled everything out. And since we're gonna be running the smart coils along with a bunch of auxiliary sensors because these motors don't come originally turbocharged, we need stuff for the MAC valves, for oil temperature and a lot more stuff we're trying to monitor. So now I'm just running all of my connecting terminating ends onto this harness, to try and get everything wrapped up so the guys can get ready to get cartooned at the end of this week. You know what you're doing? Uh, no, I'm a body guy. This here, it's like snakes. Baby snake, baby snake. So I'm gonna hide this thing here because we don't need a bunch of cam stuff. We don't need that. <laughs> no, we need that. The big thanks to uh, Alexandre that pre-made this thing. It's put the looms on and left everything here just so we can come in and put the connectors to it. Got to length and put the connectors in here because if he hadn't done that, me and Mr. Chris here would be like you know, spend a couple extra days into it. We ain't Chris, got a couple extra days. We don't. I leave on Thursday for Formula Drift, and these boys are going to be left by themselves. I'm going to see how they do. I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> I hope by then this is all wrapped up here and uh, I don't have to do wiring because that's not my thing. Yeah, because I, I think somebody asked in the comments, like, where's the battery kill switch going to be? And I guess it's right there in the middle of the dash? Yes. Uh, Ricardo made this thing for a guy called Justin that is building an awesome AMC car and um, it's up that Justin didn't finish his car yet and he was nice enough to send me this thing so he's gonna wait for the new one to him and I'm, I'm able to use it because I'll, I, I'll definitely will not put one of those <laughs> toggle things in there so yeah so he sent me this he thing and like Big, big, big thank you, Ricardo. Appreciate it, bro. This thing is freaking awesome. And Justin, you're so kind, man, to sell me your own part. Now you're gonna wait for one. I hope Ricardo gives it back yours. Show me the back of it. Quick enough. The back? Oh, okay, caution. Just go smooth, like, right in there. There's some wires in the back that I gotta move. Just like that. Boom. What's going on? Do you see it? No. You don't see it? No. Right here. It's the comment. It's no. the comment. It says thank you. What's it say right here? All right, oh, I appreciate that. You know, I'm not sure if he's in person is as good as you guys believe to be, but I uh, thank you. Appreciate that. It was a uh, four in the morning paint job, so we hope it's good enough. I just have to keep What's up? I love reading you guys' comments. I try to like them and respond to them as much as I can. So here's back at you, buddy. Taking time out of my day for you. Yeah. not following the directions properly. Nope. I tried to do it my own, but then uh, I decided to follow the directions, you know. So why is Fab sent over Marlin their latest handbrake? Fancy village boy matches the car. Same almost, blue. Almost paint matches to the car though. Yeah, that's it. It's nice. Almost. Look at it. It's very close. Pretty close. It's it's awesome. Like here somewhere. 
<laughs> okay, get out of my way, Joel. <laughs> Alright, Marlon. One of the comments asked, well, a few comments asked, we didn't exactly address who owns this car. I have this thing for 12 years, I believe. Not so sure. it's your car. And you're allowing us to help you build the car. I went to the SEMA last year with Connor. We did the burnout box with the Hoonigans and stuff. And this thing was sitting on the side of the shop there for, let's say, I owned the car for let's say roughly 12 years or at least 10 years with this chassis underneath. And um, I need something to go do burnouts this year. Somehow we got it, you know, got talking to Nando and Duarte and uh, Nando asked a guy that he knows in it to do the rendering of the car, so how it should look like, and we start talking about it. So I brought the rendering to Duarte, and then Duarte got in, you know, got in town with the with the people, you know, that helps Drift HQ and stuff, and uh, you know, Wise Fab, most of the, the things here, Firebrand, and all the, you know, the guys got on board with it like right away. He was like, he was, he went to PRI, just texting me like, oh, this is on board, that's on board, this is on board, that's on board, so. It was pretty good, and that's why we're here at Drift HQ. You guys helping me put the car together, to because he said that he will help me by the end of the build, finish putting the car. Because just pausing there in the shop. In a nutshell, you had you had the meat and potatoes, and we had the seasoning. It's about there. <laughs> <laughs> so um, what do we get out of it? You guys got to help me. Dude, did we get to drive the car at all? Uh, no, uh, actually this car, I told Duarte if you want to take it to the Drift HQ, you know, events. I usually go to those things, so, you know, it wouldn't be a problem. But if I don't go, you guys could take it there and leave it there and drive it and those kind of things. I don't, I, I'm not, I don't, I'm not comfortable with the car right now because, it, you know, none of the suspension, it was tested. It was just put it, to, put it in the car, the, the framework I'm talking about. And uh, I guess we're gonna see soon how it's gonna hold up and uh, let's see six stuff on those frames. <laughs> Hope I did it right, because if not, Ooh. shit. Yeah. All right, so this is the end of the video. I got Marlon over here to explain what condition the car is gonna be for episode three. Uh, this thing is going to be Hopefully, I'll put it together, running, driving, and uh, it's gonna be tested, tuned, all this kind of stuff. So, I'm not sure the orders that I said in there if it's right, but it, my mind is going crazy right now. But it's going to be, I guess, next features and things out of this thing is gonna be at the Vibrant Boot inside of SEMA. Two weeks from now? Two weeks and a half from now. We were actually talking about getting Sean Booth to test it out because he comes in and he's like, oh, I shouldn't trust Sean, I think, but I trust him. So, I'm trying, <laughs> but, I'm trying to blow it up. Yes, it's like, you know, Sean, please, you know, like, take it easy, man. <laughs> yeah, right. Go easy like, comment, subscribe, and Marlon? No, no, there's no kicking. Huh? Nando? Kick. 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 Kick.